All right, hello everyone. Uh, the purpose of this video and future videos is to provide uh, anatomy review that is pertinent to the field of prosthetics and orthotics, so a little more geared towards what we do. My goal is that other cohorts will be able to use this information in the future to help facilitate their learning. I also am going to try as much as possible not to just completely bore you. I know that this material should be a review, so hopefully we will efficiently be able to go through it and that I will uh, just point out things that throughout the course of my schooling I uh, wish I would have known a little bit more in depth at the time to be able to better understand uh, what my orthotic and prosthetic professors were discussing. So a quick introduction in case another cohort uh, happens to see these. My name is Cassandra Delgado. I am currently a student at Alabama State University's Master of Science in Prosthetics and Orthotics program. That is my email address, so if you have any questions or uh, have found some literature that is contrary to anything that I say, please, please, please let me know. Um, I would greatly appreciate it. So, uh, additionally, I am part of Cohort 3, the graduating class of 2016, and I'm thankful to serve as their class president. I have learned so much from these individuals, and I encourage you all to stay competitive with yourself, but on the same team as your peers. Learn what you can from anyone. Uh, what I would suggest is just as hard as you've studied for anatomy in the past, continue studying in uh, your P&O focused courses. There are great study rooms in the library specifically for graduate students at Alabama State. So often I have become very tired of going to Buskey or being in the Forest Avenue lab. So they have these great rooms you can check out that are really big, all have marker boards, and are specifically for uh, graduate students. So be sure to take advantage of those. Uh, also, since we are in the labs now, uh, you'll have full lab courses. Just be mindful of everyone else that's using the lab and ask for help when you need it. Like here, uh, I always have to stand on a box and I need the tall guys to help me out sometimes. So, uh, oh, there I am again. Uh, also, you will mess up and you will get looks like this occasionally from some of your teachers. So, when that happens, just learn from them and keep going. Uh, stay focused and mindful on what you're doing or you'll get an award such as a castastrophe as Dr. Duncan liked to call it. Anyway before we get started uh, I just want to do a quick thanks to Dr. Mary Beth Downs who has been more influential in my life than she'll probably ever know. She's a phenomenal anatomist that I was very fortunate to learn both anatomy and neuroscience from. Uh, I've never studied more honestly for another teacher and I credit my enjoyment uh, curiosity and passion for anatomy to her. For cohort four, there's just a few things I want to point out really quickly. Uh, this is the American Academy of Orthotists and Prosthetists website. It's onp.org and be sure you become a member of the Academy because uh, for a few reasons. For the annual meeting, the information about it is right here that a lot of us are planning on going to in March. This is how you register as a student. So you have to be a part of their organization to go to their meeting um, and in order to get a student discount to attend this meeting then you will need to um, have registered through them and then there's like a high school career awareness program that you do one day um, to get that discounted rate. So additionally um, becoming part of the Academy gives you access to the online learning center where you will have to do some coursework for your cranial seminar and other classes and this is where you will do continuing education in the future uh, when you are certified. Additionally, there is, where is it at? Hmm. Okay, uh, additionally there is the JPO subscription that you are able to get when you become part of it. The JPO is the Journal of Prosthetics and Orthotics and it is critically important because when you go to the um, board of certification for our field and you go to the exam reference recommended reading list you will see that the second thing listed is JPO so all of these references is where they are able to pull questions and uh, cite, cite them from. All right, so be sure that you become part of the Academy um, I am currently logged in right now but if I log out you guys will click become a member student membership 36 bucks come down online application I'm not a member just fill out your information and then click the student membership right here and it will waive your application fee. So you'll just submit that and you are now part of the Academy and it lasts for one year. If I go and log in, you will be able to see that I have access to the Online Learning Center. Um, let's go home. And I can go back and see the old coursework that I've done. 
So I've done all these. If I want to go back in and let's just say look at this again, I can come in and view this lesson and go over it again. Okay, so that's really neat. Um, I think that's all pretty much that I use the Academy for right now. Uh, just take a look real quick under the Education tab. There are scholarships that you are capable of applying for and receiving. I am the 2015 Dan McKeever Scholar Recipient. Uh, the deadline for that is the end of May for this next year, so you all should be eligible um, for it at that time. The Ken Scholarship is for technician students, but I believe this Chester, yeah, the Chester Hedden one is uh, for practitioner students as well. So this has a few more requirements for the qualifications to receive it. Um, but they're really great scholarships. I was recognized at the National AOPA meeting this past October, so that was really cool. And um, it's getting your name out in the field and making you a more well-known individual. All right, so one final thing is ONP.com. This is a different website. Um, so the other one before for the Academy was ONP.org, and this is ONP.com. It's run um, partially by the ONP Edge, which is a newsletter that uh, deals with everything our field can imagine. So it's bringing up OSEO integration and different things. There's just This website is pretty much um, just strictly informational. But the one thing I want to point out here is this is called the Listserv. Um, and what you do is you are able to subscribe to this I guess you can say like a email discussion board and it will send you emails from practitioners, from pet orthists, from people all across the nation and world that have problems or questions or um, need just a secondary opinion from the rest of us. Uh, so you can go in like severe equinus, equinovirus deformities and ambulation. So they have a question about a patient and you were able to go in and perhaps you have worked with a lot of equinovirus um, or patients with equinovirus deformities and being able to uh, talk to other people in our field is really beneficial so sign up for it you do get um, a few emails probably about four to five emails a week so use the email address you might not check a lot uh, I know a lot of people have looked through these to kind of see what practitioners are often asking about and have used this as a springboard for some research ideas. So going through here and seeing also current problems of what uh, practitioners in the field right now are dealing with is really is really cool for me and it's been kind of helpful to read what other people um, run into. Alright, so I think that's about it. Again, ABCOP is our board certification um, group or it, that's their website and you can just go down and see uh, again all the different um, resources made available to you. So just be sure you are familiar with these websites, okay? Uh, one more thing I do want to point out is that under research at the Academy's website, here's all of um, the research information. Critically appraised topics is something Dr. Childers might ask you to um, be a part of in the future and pretty much this is a small literature review. How many times have you been in the clinic and the practitioner you're under says, hey, you know what, let's all stop for an hour and read read uh, the latest research that's out. No, that doesn't happen. So what these critically appraised topics does is it takes a question pertinent to our field and looks at all the research out there on it, takes uh, the most important research and kind of tries to answer that question based on research. So Ryan Funderburg was a member of cohort two from Alabama State's p program and then Dr. Childers again as our teacher and they looked at elevated vacuum suspension systems. Um, myself and a few of other classmates have we have submitted two critically appraised topics and have been um, approved to have these down here so these hopefully uh, after a few edits will become another critically appraised topic. So pretty much it's it's just a summary for individuals in our field that can look and see um, more efficiently what what the research out there is saying. Uh, another thing, yeah, these all just are talking more about research. The Thranhart Lecture Series, these are really, really cool if you are able to go and watch uh, any one of these individuals speak. These are the best of the best. These are putting out excellent research that is critical to our field, is um, pertinent to our field, and really, really um, makes a big difference. So these individuals are really smart and 
our Dr. Childers is somewhere in here because he was um, a recipient of the Three and High Lectures because he's um, way super smarter than I am. Where is he? I think I can't remember when he won his. Let's find him. Aha! Found him. Um, yes, Petalingi Cemeteries. So he's. Um, I think he's still working on some of this research also. But anyway, um, just keep this in mind whenever you go and sign up for the Academy as something that you need to take a look at. Alright, so let's go ahead and keep going. Alright, references and sourcing for these videos. Um, just really quickly, I'm going to go through majority of the books that I will be using uh, for information in these videos. Uh, I'm going to make every attempt to properly source my information so that you can go back and read if you so desire and so you know I'm not just making stuff up. Uh, however, as a disclaimer, I am not a source that you can cite for a test, assignment, uh, etc. It's your professional and educational responsibility to have the correct and uh, relevant information for your assignment. Uh, however, with that being said, my goal is to remain as accurate as possible in accordance with the current literature. So information that I will be giving you comes from uh, things that I have learned from Dr. Mary Beth Downs, Dr. Childers, uh, Dr. Duncan, Ms. Hill, Ms. Parker, and uh, any of the other faculty at Alabama State, as well as from these um, books. So uh, Dr. Frank Netter, Atlas of Human Anatomy, 6th edition. Color Atlas of Anatomy, 7th uh, edition, more clinically oriented anatomy, 7th edition. I really like the blue pages that are in this book because they are um, the clinical sections. And for each uh, area, I suggest that you go back and just skim over the different pathologies because they're just small, like pathological cases in there. Uh, the manual muscle testing book that you will use in um, PCC2 from Daniels and Worthingham, your GONI book, Measurement of Joint Motion. Uh, this is the Lusardi book. I have the second edition, which is on the left. You will probably have the third edition, which is on the right. The information in the book is almost exactly uh, the same. The page numbers are just off by like two or three pages. So uh, it's still going to be in there. If you can find it, I'll try to give you the heading or the title of where um, I'm getting that information as well as the page number, but it's pretty, uh, pretty close. And then your functional anatomy book, uh, Newman, Kinesiology of the Musculoskeletal System, Prosthetics and Orthotics by Seymour, um, Dr. Salter's book, Textbook of Disorders and Injuries of the Musculoskeletal System. Uh, this is a little bit older book, but I still think some of the things in it are pretty uh, relevant and important. I had to get it for my uh, pathology class. Um, this book was written by some of the individuals up at the University of Michigan, Prosthetic and Orthotic. Uh, center, yes, orthotic, UMOPC, that's what it's called. So, uh, this is a really good book. And then, additionally, the Atlas of Amputations and Limb Deficiencies, and again, the uh, American Academy of Orthopedic Surgeons Atlas of Orthoses and Assistive Devices.